Hi guys, I'm Joe Klimczewski, founder of The Diet Doc, here with Corey Probst, our wellness director and vice president, back in our five gears of energetic goal pursuit. Not just goal pursuit, energetic goal pursuit. <laughs> I like the way you said that, Joe, energetic. <laughs> yes, that's what, you gotta, that's, that's what it's all about, right? We, we, yeah. we covered in the first gear the whoop principle. How can that not be energetic when you just mm -hmm. say whoop? Whoop. Whoop, there you go. So, <laughs> So that was first gear. I'm going to let Corey review some of this stuff. Second gear, we started into the three principles of self-determination theory, the three yeah. motives or incentives that undergird every single decision we make as human beings. And the second one, or I should say the first uh, principle, second gear yeah. was autonomy. Mm -hmm. Third uh, gear was connection. Today, yes. we're going to be talking about the fourth, which is the third principle, fourth gear, third principle. Don't, don't even try and write that stuff Why down. Too confusing. Yes. Uh, we're going to be talking about competence, which is something that you and I love to discuss, Corey, because there's a pro and a con to that, the double-edged sword. So I'll let you review uh, as much as you need to, and then we'll jump right into that uh, fourth gear. Yeah, so we're we're on the road guys we are picking up speed because we have engaged in behaviors that support our autonomy which is our sense of choice you know that sense of volition that we're doing the driving <laughs> literally no one else is sitting in the driver's seat we are and we've determined that this is our goal we haven't adopted a goal that is someone else's or that someone else said we need to do or should do but we've determined that it's important to us and we've identified all the reasons why and we see how it's connected to our values because we want the goal to have meaning if it's going to be an energetic goal pursuit, right? So we've shifted gears then into connection. We have feel a sense of, of belonging and, you know, we were looking at this from the perspective, Joe, before of, you know, being a coach and how we can foster this sense of belonging and connection within our clients. But those of you who are listening, many of you are clients working with coaches. You have a sense of connection that needs to be supported um, very strongly. If you, if you want to pursue this goal feeling really vital, right, and feeling very determined. So that's the third gear. Now we're shifting into gear number four. And this is the basic psychological need of competence. So this is this felt sense that I can influence or impact, you know, my environment, my circumstances, the situations in which I find myself. Uh, it's the need to feel effective, right? And skillful. I love, that's one of my favorite words because, you know, Joe, you and I have talked about how it's so important as coaches to engage in a process of um, skill scaffolding. If we don't have a good sense of where our clients are when they come to us, what skills uh, they have currently or don't have, we're not going to be able to see kind of where the next best step would be to take them or what to teach them or how to teach them those skills. I just came back from a weekend with my cycling coach. And a bunch of what we were doing was all about that. Him seeing how I'm riding, him seeing how I am pedaling my bike, <laughs> us testing what level of efficiency and effectiveness I'm riding with and where the, the leaks in energy are going, right? We need to be able to do the same thing with our clients who are coming to us with you know, health and fitness and nutrition and weight related goals. Because ultimately, if I'm to continue cycling, and if I'm to continue cycling well, and if I'm to continue cycling in a manner that's enjoyable for me, right, I need to learn new skills for our clients too. If they want to be able to sustain their weight loss and their health and their fitness, then they need to learn new skills and feel competent through the process too. Now we facilitate that by the manner in which we, we talk to our clients and the manner in which we ask questions of them and, and ask them for feedback. But some of the other 
real supportive behaviors of competence include things like creating optimal challenges for them. Skill scaffolding means we don't give them something that's so far out of reach that we're just, we're creating a sense of discouragement. That doesn't build competence, <laughs> right? So other things are, you know, we're assisting them with developing a process of problem solving. When they're no longer working with us, they need to have a system or a process in place that includes questions they, they may ask themselves to cue themselves to think in a certain way in order to, and I like to call it solution solve, right? They notice a problem, but then they're going into a process of developing a solution that can increase their sense of competence in moving forward. Other things we can do as coaches is to provide very immediate and informative feedback. So, you no, know, I, I think a lot of coaches that are out there are very good at encouragement. And they're like, go team, you're, or, you know, you're doing this so well, this is so awesome. But that doesn't provide the client with anything except a hurrah, like a little increase in dopamine. And yes, that's important because they can probably say, oh, my coach is proud of me. And that feels awesome. But if we're working, really looking at competence building, effectiveness, and skillfulness, then when we're congratulating or encouraging our clients, we got to get really specific about what it was they did well, what, what we noticed in terms of how they did it, what was the approach that we're kind of intuiting that they took. And then asking them questions. And I love this question posed to clients is, how did you do that? <laughs> what was your process? What were you thinking about when you did that? And maybe they weren't thinking anything. Maybe they don't, they're not aware of a, a process. They just did it. It came automatically to them. But to have them understanding now in a more aware way, what it was they did and how they did it means that they can now apply it again. So now they have a systematic process. I think all of us, it's worth asking <clears throat> that we do on a daily basis that seem to come so naturally, asking ourselves like, how did I do that? You know, it, it'll give us some really valuable information. Some other things that coaches can do that supports competence is when we're giving feedback, it's, it's sincere and it's typically very direct, right? And it's about performance. So I hit on this, but I think it's important too to recognize that each client is going to have a different way or different manner of receiving our feedback. You know, I, I prefer my coach to just tell it like it is. Like if, if I'm sucking at something, then say that. <laughs> like that looked horrible. Um, not in a mean or rude way, but just to say like, we really need to work on that, Corey. I saw energy leaks all over the place there. Um, and, as a coach, I prefer to provide feedback that way too, not to be critical. But if, if I know I'm working with a person who wants to really develop a high sense of efficacy, then I'm going to be very careful about the manner in which I speak with them. Is this making sense? Yeah, you know, you had my heart racing. Uh, I was in fourth gear hard with... Uh, <laughs> Just the transition into the feedback loop, because if we're talking about competence, the, the, the one word I, uh, I like, you, you talked about skillfulness, yeah. it's, it's that there is a, there's a purpose to that. We all want to feel like we belong and that we're needed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my brain is rooted in social psychology mm -hmm. and I, I like that it's an interactive experience. You, you can't say, I feel competent at something all by yourself. Oh, here I am out in the middle of the woods. I don't know any other human beings in the world, and I can build an amazing 
cabin. Well, you know, you might feel that that's, you know, that's great. It's keeping you alive, but to, to, to have some kind of, uh, almost like a plumb line, a guide that says, this, this is why I feel competent. I'm gonna, I wanna share a little story because it was just amazing to me. It totally made me stop in my tracks and watch mm -hmm. this thing. Um, Dr. Oz has a new podcast and he interviewed the psychologist, Jordan Peterson. Everybody mm -hmm. knows Peterson has just risen <laughs> to fame you know, yeah. so high. But this was a uh, this was a, an interesting podcast because it wasn't contentious. It wasn't Peterson pinned in a corner trying to defend himself and some of his wackier things. Mm -hmm. He was he was in a setting where he could just describe where he's truly brilliant, which is mm -hmm. basically family psychology type stuff. Mm -hmm. And so Oz asked him about you know why why do you do this? You know tell me you know your twelve rules for life, all this. And he said you know what. I was walking through LA and it was kind of a, you know, not, not the best part of town and this car kind of stopped right in front of me, you know, to the side and, and a kid jumped out, a, a Latino kid. And he said, are you Dr. Peterson? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> he said, he, the, the, the kid just kind of welled up with tears and he said, this is my dad in the car. And because of your teaching, because you taught me specifically steps of taking responsibility I repaired my relationship with my father. You know, we hadn't spoken in this long and we had a horrible relationship. Now I love him and we're doing this. And, and, and Dr. Peterson was just weeping and sobbing as he told Dr. Oz this. Yeah. And, he, and he said, this is why. He said, this is why I'm so emotional. It doesn't fucking take anything to change somebody's life except a word of encouragement like that. Mm -hmm. I encourage this kid through a podcast that you can, you can change your life, you can make it better, you can be somebody, and now this kid is on this upward tra trajectory. And it just, it was so, just, I don't know, it was one of those sincere, heartwarming moments where you see the, these two people are affecting each other. I mean, think how much that encouraged Peterson in return. But, but it, his point was, it just doesn't take a lot to make somebody's life that much more enriched. And that's where competence, I think, comes from. It's we, we so crave to be validated and we so crave to be needed. And when, when somebody recognizes that, and I know this is in the context of a coaching relationship, mm -hmm. and that's why all of that was just to support what you said about refraining from just slapping them on the back. Hey, good job. Have a great week. You know? Yeah get in there, talk to them, ask questions. How are you doing? And this goes well beyond what we're describing here, but that's really that's important in this client coach relationship. Totally. And our clients crave that. Why did they hire us in the first place? Because they want to become better. They want to develop. They want to learn new things. Yes. Oftentimes we have other situations going on in our lives that are really difficult and are robbing us of some of that bandwidth that we could be putting into this goal pursuit. And in moments like that, it's going to be more difficult for them to listen, for them to take it in, for them to absorb it, and then for them to act on it and apply it. But there's, there's where our competence comes in as coaches is to be able to pay attention to those things in their body language and their tones of voice and in their mannerisms and the, the way in which they're communicating or not communicating with us. We can intuit in skillful ways kind of what's going on in that client's life even when they're not saying anything. We can communicate when we're not overtly communicating. The other thing too, Joe, that I appreciated about what you just shared is the opposite holds true as well. You said, you know, it doesn't take much to change a person, to change a life in a positive way. Well, it doesn't take much either to crush someone too. <laughs> and so as coaches, we've really, we've got to develop an effectiveness and a competency in, in, having empathy skills and we need to be compassionate and we need to develop kindness. What does all that stuff mean? Let's, let's develop de definitions for that. And, um, 
and behaviors for enacting each of one of those things in our collaborative relationships with clients. And I think that's where I'll, I'll, I'll end with competency is the, the one thing that really, really supports it is to acknowledge the feelings of the client and the perspectives of the client. So we, we need to be very aware of what they're sharing with us and, and acknowledge that, that we hear it. We don't have to fix it, but we need to acknowledge that it's there, that it's in the room, that it's between us in communication. Yeah, and you know, that makes me think, Corey, I think it still holds true that the purpose-driven life is the number one selling nonfiction book in history and think of just why that is. Everybody, like I said, wants to feel they have a purpose. And mm -hmm. I don't agree with the entire premise of that book because the very first sentence is, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about your purpose. Well, it is all about you, but you have to find a way to work that in collectively with other people in society and family and relationships. Uh, that's where it matters. But at the same time, the, the whole just, just title of that book that, you know, captured so many people because we're looking for something to belong to. Uh, that's yeah. why tribalism is such a hot topic and in, in word right now. And this is, this is, I think, one of the biggest things. In, I mean, it's why it's one of the three primary psychological drives in us. And that is just because even though we don't like to talk about it, that we have a need. We don't want to feel needy. We don't want to sound needy. We don't want to ask for help or we don't want to be a burden. Yeah. Right. I mean, all of those things. And at the same time, you got to say, you know what, this is what I want my life to be about. And at this moment of your life, if that's physical transformation, if that's mm -hmm. regaining your health, mm -hmm. improving your health, reaching toward goals so that you're more effective in other areas of your life, this is uh, important stuff because if you're, if you're finding out in those areas that you can grow and feel like you have skillfulness, as you said, Corey, yeah. uh, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, we need more skillful means of being who we are in relationship, in our careers, um, in school, in whatever situations we find ourselves in. To your point about purpose, um, I find that's a that's a pretty hot topic because it's like, do we ever just have one purpose? I don't. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I have the values of, you know, treat people with compassion, but my like my purpose right now in this moment is to help people understand what purpose is to me. Let me do this podcast as skillfully as possible. When we're done, my purpose is going to be very different in the next hour. So that is kind to me, purpose is like a, a single pointed focus with, with clarity and precision. Um, but then we have kind of the foundation of our life too. And to me, that's an approach. It's not my ultimate goal in life. And it's possible that a lot of people have that. Like I came out of the womb wanting to be a mom. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> I know that I feel very purposeful when I'm aware and present and I have a single pointed focus in this moment right now. So. And I do think that that is, is, is it a perfect way to summarize uh, this, this particular topic. And that is, we always talk about the, the value judgment and if somebody set, if people want to know what their quote purpose is because they want to make sure it's the right purpose. If mm -hmm. it's the wrong purpose, I've wasted my life. My life didn't mean anything. I did stuff wrong. And that's to your point, exactly what we should not be doing. My purpose today might be this 10 years from now, my entire life might be different yeah. And developmentally, I may have so many different interests and needs in my life mm -hmm. that I can't, I can't look back. I was having a conversation with somebody this weekend and, and we were talking about regrets and well, maybe I should have done this. And 15 years ago, I think this was a mistake. And I said, no, you made all of the best decisions you could at that, at that point. You did. The information you had. You made great decisions. 
Yeah. yeah, you made great decisions, you did everything you could do, and things change over time. And now you made other decisions, and those were good decisions. And, and now, now you have to keep looking forward at the rest of your life and what decisions do you want to be making as you move into that horizon? Yeah, and maybe their whole decision making process is more skillful now. <laughs> so, Absolutely. <laughs> they didn't they hadn't built that, they didn't have a skillful means of making decisions then, perhaps, but but yeah. you can see how fast our feeling of competence yeah. can erode because yes. we start second guessing, well, you know, maybe that was quote wrong. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. it's just you're you're building competence and you're you're in new contexts every day, every season of your life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So Joe, next time we're gonna go into overdrive. We're gonna shift That's into here. gear five and we'll discuss the practical applications of the supportiveness of how to support those three basic psychological needs. So what can we engage in that is going to result in a highly energetic goal pursuit? Awesome. Awesome. And thank you for bringing all this great info to us, Corey. Yeah. Thank you. And you guys, make sure as you're listening or watching this, you're aware of the other ways you can consume this. We have this as a YouTube channel. So if you're listening to us, for example, on SoundCloud and you wanna, you wanna see us, you wanna watch that video, it's there on YouTube. Uh, we're on iTunes, so you can download there and, and leave reviews. We also have Instagram and Facebook pages for us individually and as a company. So you might want to uh, sift around in some of those areas and, and you'll get different types of content from us if you're interested. But as always, we appreciate you viewing and listening and we're going to catch you next time for fifth gear. Thank you guys.